welcome back to the channel this is motion designer and in today's video we're going to take a look and learn how mcknights media create their animation and i believe that after watching the technique that i'm going to show you right now you'll be able to create any types of mcknights media style animation and if you want the project file in assets you can go to this instagram post and comment link and i'll send you the files directly to your dms click the first link in the description all right let's get started so we'll start by opening photoshop and this is a full hd canvas 1920 by 1080 nothing fancy i'm gonna drag and drop the image the stock image so i'm gonna go and delete the background i'm going to select this rectangle tool and draw a box around this like this and i'm going to right click select inverse or you can select this and i'm going to generate a fill and I'm going to extend this hit generate all right so here is the extended version you can choose from different options here you have three I'm going to stick with this first one so after you have done that select both this layer I'm gonna right click and merge layers I'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting ctrl J and I'm gonna rename this subject so we're gonna mask out this subject right so it's very easy select this select subject and we're gonna wait for a while and photoshop has done a very good job but if you zoom in it's not very precise but i think this will work for the type of animation that i'm going to create so i'm going to go and select this and mask it out if you unsolo if you shut off the bottom layer you can see the subject has been masked out and what I'm gonna do right now is turn off this subject and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this subject because this is going to be the background, right? So select this rectangle tool once again and I'm gonna draw a box around the subject. I'm gonna go and simply click on this generate and I'm gonna wait for a while. All right, it has been removed. All right, I'm gonna go with this number one again and I'm going to select both of these, right click and I'm gonna merge layers and what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract this foreground and separate the background again so the easiest way to do is you can go here and select this quick selection tool and i'm going to draw like this simply draw it and zoom in and if you hold down alt and paint on these unwanted areas you can remove this selection something like this and I'm going, just going to do a rough selection because we don't have to be super precise on this. So just like that. Let's see. I include this, this as well. And I think we're good to go. Right? Once you are happy with the selection, simply hit Control J, selecting on this layer. Control J it will duplicate and extract out this part only so I'm gonna rename this foreground and shut off that and we're left with the background only so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this again so I'm going to this lasso tool and I'm gonna roughly select you know this one oops all right, that's the selection and I'm going to simply go to generate a fill again and then generate. All right, we are left with this. Let me just go and see the other ones. I think, I think this is gonna be fine. So I'm gonna use this. So these two layers, I'm gonna select both of these, right click, merge layers, and I'm gonna rename these BG for background. And this is the foreground and this is the subject. All right, so we are good to go for the animation. We have set up everything. We'll just save this, just control S to save it. And I'm gonna rename this main comp and save it as a Photoshop layer. And we'll go inside After Effects and we'll animate this, all right? So let's go to After Effects. So here in After Effects, you can go to the project panel, double click on this, and I'm going to navigate to the Photoshop project that we have saved. Click on this composition, retain layer sizes, and I'm gonna import. And it's gonna ask you one more time and hit OK. So here, as you can see here in the project panel, you have the main comp. Double click on that to open that. You have this, and you simply have to turn on uh, 3D layers 
for all these uh, layers. And so what I'm going to do is create a new camera. And I'm going to create a null object for the controller null object, which is a 3D layer. And I'm going to parent this camera, this camera to the null, right? So once you are done, go to this view and select two views and you have the left view and I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Select the background layer and move it way back, right? And I'm going to select the foreground layer and I'm going to move it backwards a little bit and I'm going to scale it to fit the composition again, something like this. Or you can hit S and it's just from here if you want. Also the position like that and I'm going to scale up the background layer as well to fit the comp. Something like that. All right, so once you have this, select this null, hit P on the keyboard, set a keyframe, and I'm going to go to the last and push it towards the subject like this. And maybe move it up a little bit, something like this. All right, so I'm going to select all the keyframes and hit F9 for easy ease. Go to the graph and you might tweak the graph something like this and if you go to one view and fit the size you can see you have a very nice animation already here so i'm going to animate this subject a little bit so select the subject hit p on the keyboard set a keyframe and move to the last frame and I'm going to move the Y position up a little bit like this, like that, and go to the first frame and maybe even lower this a touch as well. I'm going to select all these keyframes, F9, go to the graph and I'm going to tweak the graph again. Do something like this, right? Simple as always. And if you play back, you can see it's very nice. So to sell the effect even more, you can add some other elements, which is uh, stock images. So I'm going to go and import those images, drag and drop it. So I have these assets. I'm going to import this chair and make this a 3D layer as well. And I'm going to move the position behind the subject and I'm going to scale it down maybe 15% maybe 10 so 12 okay so i'm gonna move it somewhere here maybe even smaller than that and you can even rotate it however you want i'm gonna make it something like this and to reposition it somewhere here and the next thing that i did was i imported another image which is a book drag and drop it and make it a 3d layer and I'm going to make this book scatter all over the place. So towards the camera, I'm going to size it down to maybe 20 and maybe even, oops, maybe even move the position towards the camera so that we have some more depth and scale it down to five or so. You can go to two views and you can always adjust the, adjust the place, the, the position of the book. Maybe I want it somewhere here and Give it one view and you can also scale it up 10 and you know right that's very cool already you can see it and i'm going to duplicate a few copies of the book maybe rotate it and move it towards the camera even more over here you know it's just a variation a random variation of the book you just have to play with the variation right so i'm going to duplicate another copy and you know, move it somewhere here and rotate it again and adjust the Z axis, Z position. So we're here, right? You got the idea. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next item, which is this, and I'm going to make this a 3D layer as well. Move it towards the camera, scale it down even more. Oops, P position and move it towards the camera so that we cross that right 
Maybe scale it down even more to 15 or so. Maybe that's too big. Maybe 10. And you can, you know, rotate it like this. Something like this. You duplicate it. You have to push it just near the subject. Maybe somewhere around here. And maybe bring it towards the camera a little bit. And you can add some variation to the rotation as well something like this and all right i'm going to duplicate some more copies of this somewhere here and you can play it back right that's very cool and one more thing i would do is i'm going to duplicate this book put it somewhere here maybe rotate it something like this and maybe even push it towards the camera even more to to create some more depth like that and i'm going to add a lantern now right so i'm going to drag and drop this lantern and make this a 3d layer as well maybe scale it down scale it down maybe hit move it towards the camera a little bit and maybe even scale it down further to 10. oops that's too small 20. yes we'll move it somewhere here and maybe rotate it like this and maybe i'm gonna make it even smaller 15 something like this and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to duplicate this Control d to duplicate it and i'm gonna add a glow glow and you can see I, i'll add some glow here in the lamp and you know just add a glow and i'm gonna add this set this blending mode to screen close that up and we're gonna go and select this ellipse tool selecting on this layer I'm gonna mask this this out like this something like this you can adjust your mask and hit F to feather it I'm gonna feather this and you can see the before and after right that's very nice you can even duplicate this layer and make it glow even more so but i'm gonna leave that for now and move on to the next one maybe i'm gonna duplicate this book one more time and you know move it away somewhere here and maybe even rotate it like this after that let me just go and add a text add a text and make this a 3d layer 3d layer and make sure to put it just above the background i'm going to copy the background hit p select the position Control c to copy and select the text Control v to paste it and reposition this somewhere around here and you can even scale the text up depending on your need let me just push it a little bit towards the camera we have already created a very nice animation like that but if you pay attention it's just flat and it's just boring so to sell the effect even more go inside this camera and we're going to turn on the depth of field and we're going to crank up the aperture to 150 and right away you can see some depth of field but if the camera doll when the camera doll is in you might have the subject out of focus so i'm going to teach you how to stay in focus consistently throughout the animation so go to the two view and if you pay a closer attention to the focus distance if i increase the values you can see the focus distance moves here so set this focus distance to the subject so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select the subject which is this one you can see this layer we're gonna set a keyframe for the focus distance and this is the subject so roughly about here I'm gonna set a keyframe and go to the last frame so we're gonna bring the focus back here so we're gonna bring it back here so somewhere around here so you have these keyframes maybe F9 for easy ease 
and if you go to two views now you have a very consistent focus on the subject okay so once you have done this we're gonna do some color correction and we're gonna match everything together right so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to select this chair i think this chair is a little bit very bright i'm gonna go and add a lumetri color lumetri color and i'm going to go to the base basic correction go to exposure and i'm gonna negative one right that's nice and what i'm gonna do is create a new adjustment layer and i'm gonna add a lumetri lumetri color here and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do some color correction and color grading here so i'm gonna add some temperature warm tone contrast and i'm gonna lower the exposure to negative one all right we want a very dark theme so many shadows and I'm going inside the color wheels and play with this blues and yellows in the highlights because we want a very warm tone here right so after you are done after you're happy with the color correction and color grading you can go and add a noise noise and i'm gonna uncheck this use color noise and maybe five let's see it's very nice so without and with and what i also did was add a posterize effect posterize time and we're gonna set this to 12 frame rate to 12 so that we have a kind of a stop motion style animation you can even add some more elements to the scene but i hope you got the idea and the concept of how mcknights media creates their videos so i hope you learned something from this watch this next video for more after effects tutorials this is motion designer and i will see you in my next video take care